Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode, we're going to mainly be just fulfilling contracts to get money. Uh, we've had a lot of excitement recently and we just need to build up a war chest to especially unlock the R&D building. Uh, so we're doing a satellite launch to Minmus. We've got four Kerbals to rescue, two in orbit of Kerbin, two in orbit of the moon. And then we've got another uh, moon satellite. Well, the moon satellite contract I haven't picked up yet so because I have only... Uh, seven slots so we'll see whether that's still around but if you got more satellite contracts I'll do those quickly so that we can get some money uh, they're always good money so uh, this is just a, a modification of Needsat 4 this Needsat 5 and I just add more fuel to the satellite this is a little one kilonewton thruster uh, satellite and then this is actually a Terrier engine and we're using these Ruby solid rocket boosters this was a cute little small rocket design that I had made and hopefully it'll work again so throttle up SAS is on and ignition and launch and throttle down because the terrier is not very good at sea level gotta be careful though we don't have a lot of steering right now I tweaked the colors uh, or the post-processing mod so it'd be a little bit less washed out. I hope I don't know. I, I'm uh, tweaking these numbers is always iffy. I don't know if I've got the right effect right now. We'll see. It's looking okay for now, but then dawn always looks good, right? Yeah. Okay, throttle up. Okay, separation, and we're still accelerating, good. The contract required a thermometer, but nothing else. I added a magnetometer as well. I think we can separate the fairings. So yeah, you can see the magnetometer there and thermometer is there. Sort of counterbalancing it. And then we've got the helical antennas that uh, work well as relays. I don't know why the helical antennas work well as relays, but there we are. Oh, the engine exploded. Okay. Uh, well, that's great. Separation, ignition. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Curvalism. Well, okay, let's uh, get that extended, just for the heck of it. Might as well get this started, too. Get these out. We might still have enough. We'll see. But to get into a particular orbit of Minmus, I don't know. Oh, it's got to be mainly the electric charge that kills us. I think. We should have had one that was forward facing. Oh gosh. Oh, we've lost control. Are we going to regain control when it tilts? That's an interesting question. I guess, but it's not going to do us any good because it's going to go retrograde. <laughs> uh, mm, but we it seems like we are recharging quickly, so that's good. Uh, just kill rotation, would you please? Let's just get a full batch of electric charge. We're in the atmosphere again, though. Exploding right there, the engine, honestly. A terrier, too. Trusty terrier. Unthinkable. It's getting hot in here. But we're on our way up again. Yeah, that's not gonna be a uh, good enough amount to transfer and make orbit. Much less get into the right orbit. Hmm. Well, let's just fling it out there. I mean, what else are we gonna do with it? Gonna take a while. We'll fly by Minmus, I suppose. Is 
This also has a sight thing, but we're in an invalid situation because we're in the atmosphere. <laughs> right. I guess that's why it was having trouble. Um, the engine exploded. Okay, alright, alright. We need, like, high-quality engines. This engine exploded, too. Uh, I thought this was higher quality than this, but apparently not. Alright. Let's try again. Hopefully, we've got all our engine explosions out of the way. Okay, trying again. This time, we are high-quality on the one kill newton thruster, the ant engine, and the... Uh, and the Terrier, we lost control of the previous Needsat 5. We will disavow knowledge of that previous Needsat 5. This is now Needsat 5, okay? Uh, so here we go again. Throttle up, SAS on. It is looking better, I think. Uh, you guys can give me your opinion. Uh, of course, there's an infinite op opportunity for color tweaking. But here we go, ignition. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, it really begins. Um, it, it still seems to have the smoke effect, even though the engine is not producing thrust. Or is it that right? It's not producing any thrust. Yeah, I think I don't think so. Kerbal was not sufficiently informed. That's interesting. Okay, recover vessel. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it was high quality at great cost, by the way. But at least we get it back. I don't know. I don't know if the recovery is calibrated properly. We'll see. Okay, 100% value. value. Okay, good. I mean, taking a look at it. You know, I mean, this Terrier, the regular version, uh, it'll only be 11,715 with high quality. It's 12,300. The Ant engine isn't as bad, but uh, still, it's a little bit... It's basically double so yeah I don't expect that kind of failure when we have high quality engines game well anyway this is supposed to be a cheap satellite launcher for heaven's sakes and here I thought I'd quickly do these satellite contracts you know um, rescue some Kerbals and it'll be a Nice, quick episode setting us up for more excitement, because we, we got a new Planet Flag on the Moon contract coming up next, so we will want to revise our moon mission and make it a little bit more robust than the previous one. And uh, yeah, I was looking forward to that game, <laughs> okay? Throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition, and launch. Throttle down. It did not uh, go past the burn time. We, I, uh, the end engine might have five minutes and fifty seconds. I don't know. We hadn't gotten that far out. Uh, but the terrier, no, definitely did not go past its burn time. Yay! Separation. Power is still gonna be an issue. Probably should have gotten some batteries on it, but, you know, we wanted to make it as cheap as possible so that the contract is lucrative. Okay, fairing set. Oh, we're a little bit shallow. Shoot. Not paying attention to that. Okay, separation. And, uh, yeah, ignition. Probably shouldn't have started the magnetometer last time either. Wonder if these little guys work when they're not fully deployed. I mean, they're still solar panels. Do they catch the sun when they're not flipped out? I mean, and why not? Okay, we really need to wait until we reach Apoapsis now. Temporarily, uh, yeah, temporarily we'll point at the sun. Compared to Needsat uh, 4, we're carrying an extra Oscar B, so we have more Delta V. Probably without that tank, the launcher stage would have got- the Terrier stage would have gotten us to orbit, but... 
I decided we didn't really need it to do that. This is better as far as Delta V is concerned overall. Okay, well, that'll do. Alright, this time we have enough, barring any anomalies. Well, that might be the best start, and then we'll capture, uh, have our apoapsis touch that target orbit and then work from there. Probably Mimus doesn't have the gravity to make a huge amount of difference though, so maybe we could just start out at a high orbit. That's good. And then we might be able to do it all in just one burn. Okay, but first we should do the initial burn, which will take a while. Okay, ignition. Oh, uh, okay, there we go. Um, well, we've got a lot of ignitions, hopefully, so I'm going to use them. Ah, ah too far. Um, let's tune the throttle down. For now, so try and really hit this. There we go. That that'll be good enough. Okay, we might have to pull that periapsis up afterwards. We'll see how touchy the contract is. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so off we go. Two minimus once again. I think it's safe to start the magnetometer. We haven't gotten signs from it from here yet. Then again, we're unlikely to be able to send too much with these helical antennas. They're not uh, the high gain antennas. Oh, we got sight data. Well, um, I don't know if it's from this. No, that's some other thing. Because orbital sun observations, we didn't. We don't have that on here. Coronal mass ejection. All the poor Kerbals that we haven't rescued yet <laughs> might have gotten baked. I certainly do like the trickle in of science thing with Kerbalism, that is good. Okay, node me please. What does Minmus look like in this light? Still looks like the moon. Still looks more like the moon than the moon. It's weird. It's very unminmus like uh, We're lo losing charge too quickly. Let me uh, stop the transmissions. That's better. Okay, ignition. Oh, uh, we're running out of battery power again. Um, wait, what, why? Oh, try to transmit something again. Shoot. Stop that. Okay, we've satisfied that orbit. And that contract. Okay, contract done. We'll set it back up to get charged. Okay, and let's make sure it's transmitting all the juicy data. Uploading none, right. Um, why don't we stop with the none? Oh, no, it prioritizes it. All right, whatever. Okay, you do what you do, satellite. Let's go and do other contracts. Uh, I took away the other uh, moon satellite contract. We've got another Minmus satellite contract, but I've had enough of Minmus already. Um, and then it's given us a whole lot of other rescue contracts. Two Kerbin, one Moon. Um, I'm sort of tempted to do a triple Kerbin. I think that's under command modules, so we're not gonna be able to rescue three at a time. Wow, that, that's five at a time right there. But we'll have to unlock the R&D building first. Yeah, and get more science. Oh, this uh, pomegranate re-entry module has a crew capacity of three. Uh, I ain't gonna boss god this thing. No. We care. We care more about our Kerbals than that. Okay. 
Uh, so we'll keep it to two uh, for Kerbin and two for the moon. And we'll work from there. Okay, so we're handling the Kerbin orbit contracts first. And here we have a Gemtar light. Uh, we reduced the core tank by one tank. Basically, it's three quarters of the original size. And we reduced the number of boosters. Basically, that's it. Also, I took off the extra life support since we won't be needing 30 days worth. We've just got the internal capsules worth of two days. So there's that. And with that, throttle up, SAS is on. No shielding on the capsule, of course. And ignition. Well, this is just my day for uh, for engines exploding, isn't it? We've had like episodes and episodes of a lot of that not happening. Okay, fine. We're not going to get that engine back, but at least we get the rocket back. Okay. Be that way. Okay, without further ado, throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. It's looking a little bit lighter, but still alright. I think it's still better than before, the colors. Both of the Kerbin orbit ones are low orbit equatorials, so no big deal. Hopefully. Okay, booster set. Alright. All right, separation and ignition, and explosion, of course. Got a bit of a red nose. Really, we have too much fuel, way too much fuel. We could probably simplify this rocket more. For low Earth orbit operations, obviously it was designed for the moon. Today also seems to be my day for shallow trajectories. No, a little bit more. All right, uh, we're in a pretty low orbit, and who's our first Erbro? I think we'll go for Erbro. Ah, uh, this might be too slow, um, but it'll be worse if Erbro has to catch up. Mm. Well, we'll use the exposed solar panels first, so. Sun down. That should supply enough power for the core. Okay. And then in the tracking station, I'll time warp. Okay, after some judicious time warping, I'm going to lift our orbit a tiny little bit so that we can have a tangency and then we'll sneak up on it basically. So, node please. Alright, that'll be good enough. Uh, let me, well, before we turn back, let me knock off the nose, nose cone just for show. Um, couple, alright. I guess I should have kept it on. Do point out that it's it's expensive, but it also annoys me at the same time. Okay, we are approaching now. It's just a matter of communications. Our separation is one point one kilometers at the intersect point, only a nine point three meter per second relative speed, because we were just very slowly catching up to it. And we found Erbro Kerman, so we are in render range now. Okay. Well, let's try and get to her. Uh, I'll just use the RCS to avoid the possibility that igniting the engines causes a problem. So, um, yeah. We've got plenty of RCS for that, even though we're carrying this huge stage. I don't know if we should continue carrying this huge stage or not. We could probably get rid of it. We've got enough fuel. Otherwise. Okay, can, coming up uh, right alongside here. Uh, oh, we're gonna boink it. It's gonna happen. Boink. Well, that's as close as it gets. <laughs> Alright, Erbro. Scientist Erbro Kerman. 
in a weird pod to be in. That at least has mod propellant for the EVA, that's always important. Okay, grab and board. All right, next Kerbal. Now we have some extra scraps in orbit. And let's see with the contracts. Fernie, we're looking for Fernie. We already got the others. Filson. Um, okay, there's Fernie's heap. All right. Well, that's going to take a while if we don't boost up. So we're going to boost up. We've got plenty of fuel to use. Probably don't want to go so far that the service module wouldn't be able to bring us back down, though. I mean, bring us, uh, bring the orbit to the target orbit. It would always be able to bring us back down in terms of re-entry. It looks good. Uh, we could probably do it in one orbit. Okay, um, that'll do for now. Looking good. Let's see what this looks like in orbit. So, yeah. I don't know. I think I'll keep it to these settings as far as the colors are concerned. Seems okay. I'm actually gonna pull its periapsis down into the atmosphere and dump the stage. So we're gonna go like that. And, well, separate the fairings. Separate the stage. And we will use the ant engines now. Okay, and we can use these solar panels just for safety's sake. And we will sidestep. Readjust our orbit so that we're not deorbiting. And otherwise go towards the target. It might be a little bit early at 14 kilometer range. Let's see. We've got fuel though, if we want to push it. Okay, we have found Fernie alive. That's good. I like the name Fernie. Come on, do all the life support stuff. Well, anyway, we'll match speeds. Okay, Fernie. Uh, okay. Definitely kill rotation now. Let's make sure the caps, uh, the hatch side is facing Fernie. And Fernie can EVA. Fernie is a pilot, that's good. Still very bright surface. Okay, Fernie is on board. All right, well, that's that. That's what we need to do. So, got a retro at 135, but let's recharge first. Uh, up, actually, is what we want. Okay, well, 136 then. Ignition. We're going towards, oh god. Uh, let's, it looks like we're off the side, geez. That's close though. Oh, uh, actually we want less than that. 26 kilometers I think I was going for before. Right, and we might as well jettison the service module now. We're pretty low. Actually, the fact that we're pretty low probably means we're gonna end up short. Probably. Uh, you know what? Taking that in consideration, let me boost up to 30 kilometers. Yeah. Uh, I still need to get good numbers on all this. So, we are charged, so separation. And this is the nose cone. That's the stack separator that I keep leaving behind and forgetting to dump early on. We do not need the comms because Fernie is a pilot anyway.
If I've got uh, landing guidance, I want to see the distance to the KSC here. KSC pad. Will it give me the right? And that looks like the right coordinates. Okay. It says 506 kilometers away. Will it be right? It also says shores. It says we'll be landing short, which I sort of expected. Because we were low. Inland water is a different biome. And we have found some inland water, apparently. Somehow, with all this land. Sure, we're not going to hit that land there? No, I think we got to come short. Oh yeah, well, it wasn't that far off on the initial projection, actually. Just about, like, 20 kilometers or less. Interesting. Very black and ominous water. And splash down. Recover vessel. Okay, Erbro and Fernie are back. Let's get those Kerbals around the moon. Who should have even more experience when we get, get to them. Okay, I've decided that this is an opportune time to test our very first cryogenic engine, the Eyesore. What a name. And it is uh, in standard quality right now, but we've tilted them so that if one engine goes out, the other engine can handle it. And at being cryogenic, it uses liquid hydrogen and oxidizer, and so that's what we filled up the tanks with. And in order to convert the Gemtar 1 to this, we needed to extend it by three of these tanks. And still, this stage is actually lighter than the previous uh, stage with the Decker engines. These engines are actually cheaper than the Decker engines, which is odd given that they're a higher technology technically. 270, and then the Decker is uh, 480. But then the Decker engine has much more thrust, 38 kilonewtons and 2 kilonewtons in the Vernier, whereas this only has uh, 17 kilonewtons total. So, and uh, 425 second ISP though, and obviously it's lighter. As three engine configs, it says, and then there are subtypes for the switchable part, but we're sticking to this one. I don't need the other shroud types, and it doesn't really give me the options for the other engine configs, so here we are. Uh, but uh, yeah, we get a little bit more delta V out of it, maybe about 400 meters per second. And then, of course, uh, the lower part is less burdened, so it'll be friskier, and we'll see how whether that works out for us at all or not. Uh, let me get rid of that one decoupler also. Well, I'll put the shroud... Well, let me do that first. Um, so, let's get this off. This time we need all the fuel and everything. And I wanted the extra Delta V from the cryogenic engine because one of the Kerbals is in an awkward orbit around the moon. Alright, so that will no, no longer be a problem, hopefully. We will see whether this is a good thing or not. Cryogenics, here we go. It really is a centaur now. Okay, here we go. SAS on. Crawl is up. Proud looking rocket now. Looking a lot more like a Titan, really. Well, except the boosters are sort of more like a Delta II, except we've only got eight instead of nine. Anyway, let's not get into details. Ignition and launch. And the standard roll. <laughs> That's funny, with the four boosters it didn't do the roll. Very interesting. Really going for it here, now that the upper stage is lighter. It's got serious power. A very Kerbal ride here. We actually tuned down the boosters, they are thrust limited somewhat. To give it more burn time to get through max Q before separating them, of course. Okay, separation. 
Okay, boosters are off. I forgot to check the burn time on that stage. Ooh. Oh, it's a nearly 10, uh, nine minute, it's a nine minute burn time, but they're only rated for 550. Uh, maybe we need high quality engines on that stage after all. Hmm. That's a bit iffy. Because of their lower thrust than the Decker engines, you see. The Decker engines were within the burn time, but they had more thrust. Yeah, this stage now only has a 0.44 thrust to weight ratio initially, so not great if we are launching Kerbals. We'll probably stick to the Decker or find some more powerful cryogenic engine for that. I guess this is why, until now, people have not been launched on Centaur stages. <laughs> the low thrust and of course they had to go to dual engine centaur on the atlas 5 we are on dual engine centaur basically with these but they're a bit under thrust centaur gets uh, the rl10s get a hundred kilonewtons on centaur these days these things do not get anywhere near like that very underpowered Okay, separation and ignition. That's an interesting sound they made, but okay, they're both on. Let me get the other antennae out. Oh, we already had an engine failure. This is probably not gonna go well. Hmm. And we've lost communication somehow? Oh, it's gonna be a long burn anyway, but uh, we have all the antennas out. That's interesting. Oh, that is a little bit too far for it. Those quad sats should be lower. We didn't have any communication problems uh, on the previous mission. So, so it is sort of surprising. Okay, we have comms we can shut down. That's not a bad orbit, but the problem is now this is gonna go... It's only got 1 minute and 20 seconds left of burn time, and we still got most of the fuel in the tank. So I think I'm just gonna deorbit this one and recover the capsule, and then uh, we will fix this up. This is not good enough. Uh, well, we don't have to recover here. We'll do another re-entry test, I suppose. Oh, we'll just use the service. Uh, yeah, okay, let's uh, deorbit the stage. And then we'll use the service module to boost it back up and then bring it back down again. Okay, that'll be good enough for the stage. Alright, uh, fairings, separation, and thrusters normal, and burn, and prograde. Okay, let's conduct some basic operations here. And we'll get another re-entry re test in here. So let's get to a standard orbit this time. And we'll see how good Mechjeb's landing guidance will help us estimate where to bring our periapsis. I will start. It seemed like uh, we were a little bit too far away at 135 degree east last time, so I'll try 145. Okay, uh, retrograde. Okay, 146 then. Okay, uh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, that's going up now. Uh, six, uh, I mean, seven kilometers. 40 kilometer periapsis though, so we need to be a little bit closer, further than 145 or 146 degrees east to bring it down more decisively. We're going to get a lot of deviation because we're going to spend a lot of time in the atmosphere like this. We will see. Uh, so, 
Uh, we'll wait until we're a little bit closer before separating the service module. Okay, normal. Service module jettison. Very artistic approach right now. Well, uh, that will uh, knock off, uh, threw us off by 39 kilometers. Uh, that was just a 30, I, I pushed off normal because I thought it wouldn't deviate our approach that much, but still quite a lot. We might want to tune down that decoupler. While we've been doing all this, we've been getting some science, so that's good. It's just been trickling in. Okay. Let me take it off of three, uh, 4x. I never like 4x time warp in these circumstances. Well, we're surely headed for water. And we're just past the KSC. There it is. So 24 kilometers off. Not bad. Well. Water is looking nicer now. Inviting, even. Okay. Gonna recover this one. Yeah. Okay, well. Just parts back. We still don't have quite enough for, I mean, with margin for the R&D facility. We need 902,000. I think I'll wrap it up here. It's been quite a problematic episode with the engine failures and other things that would rather reset in the next episode and maybe we'll try and plant a flag because we've got the plant a flag on the moon contract right um maybe we'll combine that with uh rescuing these kerbals from the moon we'll see about that i don't know whether i want to combine them or not but it seems like a thing to do so i'll plan for that and mainly i want to have uh updated lunar Mooner lander. Uh, our existing Mooner lander isn't quite good enough. The margins are so tight on it. So anyway, uh, we could get all sorts of things. Uh, fuel systems, advanced construction, pressurized cargo, nose cones, hinges, hinges, here we go, robotics. Uh, protective rocket nose cone. And some KIS stuff. I don't know if any of this is super important right now, unless they give us station contracts. I might need to get contract configurator and those packs. And these are strictly airplane parts. Uh, these aren't showing up, but we can see miniature lander can. That's cheaty. Um, lander engine, let's see. Oh, that's not good enough. Um, I mean, ant engines easily outclass it, so. Mm, landing leg. Uh, ascent stage tank with some RCS built in. An interesting shaped tank, though. Landing struts. The larger heat shield. Okay. And then RCS systems. There is this lander cam. That's just a standard lander can. Might be advisable, but actually the Hermes that we've got right now is lighter than it, right? 0.66 versus, um, did we get the Hermes right up front? No, the Hermes is here, but the Hermes is 0.46. So 0.46 versus 0.66, and it doesn't seem like we are too concerned about a lander can. Two point five meter parts may be important. The J two. Well that's that's a cryogenic engine and a half, huh? 
That might be more thrust than we need, but I can see how that could work out for us. Oh, I didn't notice this before. There's this Giotto crew module. This one is only 0.42 tons for one crew. That like super cheaty levels here. Uh, so that's lighter than this, but it's so much more expensive. This one's only 1,000. Um, that Giotto one was 4,000. Uh, where was it? Yeah, 4,000 a piece. Nah, forget that. That's too expensive. I don't know what I'm getting for that. We want to go cheaty. There is this miniature lander can. It's a little bit more expensive though. I feel bad about it though. Well, I think the J2 is the most interesting. Four ignitions is positive. I mean, uh, 550 tight, but you know. The problem is not having, you know, two of them as so that we have a backup. But I'll let you guys give your suggestions in this case, what technology we should unlock next. I won't do anything just yet. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.